All right. All right. We should, yeah. we, should get this, uh, we should get this going on here. So uh, everyone go ahead and, uh, and lean in and let's get ourselves ready here. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Tech Connect podcast hosted by the Coloma Technology Department. I'm Ben. I'm the Technology Director here in Coloma. And to my left is... Matt, your IT Support Specialist. Dan, one of your Instructional Techs and Director of Curriculum. Ooh. Tanya, Instructional Tech. Yeah, nice. And we are all excited to be here. One, because it's the end of the day. Which you guys wouldn't Woo-hoo. know, but yeah, it's it's and two, it's the end of a, of a very long, busy day. I think if you start telling them what time we record this, it breaks the space time continuum. Is <laughs> or that then they're gonna know, and then then kids will be down on Tanya's door just. <laughs> doom, 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 doom. Hey, she had to uh, kick one kid out at one because we were gonna record. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. So. All right. Well, well, I'll we'll, we'll find that 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 uh, learner and uh, apologize. So anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and go around and just let everyone know what we're up to. Um, we've got a short podcast today. We only had one question submitted. That's okay. That's okay because it's a crazy time of year. Um, so we can kind of sort of uh, um, give people a better understanding of kind of what's going on. So I'll, I'll kick it off um, and I'm just going to address the thing that I'm sure everyone's asking like, Hey, Ben, why are you guys sitting down recording a podcast when the network and the internet has been like melting down the last three weeks? So the, the, the internet and the network aren't exactly melting down. But basically, um, what we've been addressing is, is some aging hardware. And I was trying to think all weekend of a way to describe it, like what the issue is. And so I worked through a few metaphors with my wife until I finally got one that she's like, oh yeah, that makes sense, right? So if you imagine the network is like the human central nervous system, we have something called the core in the network. And the core acts like the brain stem, right? It's not the brain, it's not doing all the processing of the network or anything like that, right? It's handling all the communications between everything that's happening out in the world and everything that's happening here internally in the district. And its job, the core's job, is to send the right signals the right way. So when someone at the elementary says, oh, I would like to go to Google, please, that little request goes to the core, goes out to the internet, comes back, goes to the core, the core says, okay, here you go, and sends it to other switches to that device. Here's Google, right? The problem comes when the core is like, Hey, you know what? I don't really want to send this request to the elementary. I want to send it to the junior high instead. And then the switches in the junior high go, uh, no, this isn't mine. Sorry. And then it goes, sort of starts uh, snowballing from there and miscommunications start going all over the place. And that's when the network goes down. The internet itself doesn't go down. It's still there. It's still functioning. Everything's good. We got green across the board. But the brainstem, the thing that's in charge of sending the communications to the appropriate places in our district just doesn't, it, it can't send things to the right spot. So that's what's been going on. And hopefully moving forward, we shouldn't have those issues because over the weekend, our RISA guy and myself were here Saturday night or Saturday afternoon at three. And for about four and a half hours, we pulled out the old core there were like four different switches and we put six new switches in, had to plug everything back in and then had to run through a bunch of tests and everything. We still have a few hiccups. That's why the public wireless was kind of janky this morning, but moving forward, it should be much better. And over the summer, it's gonna get even better once the rest of our new equipment comes in that we've been waiting on. So that's that's where we're at. I know that was kind of lengthy, but. That, 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 that metaphor is, is what worked. Hopefully that works for you guys. You can understand a little better. So what, what, what about you, Matt? What are you uh, up to? I've kind of been, like you said, uh, I've been dealing with things like the public wireless going down, uh, different internet issues as kind of like a result of the big changes that have been putting in place. You know, we did the projector 
uh, replacement recently, so I did any of the follow-ups, you know, I might have came into rooms. That the, the projector replacement in the junior we, high. Yes, sorry, I forgot. Yeah. Put that part on there. We, uh, we When we did the junior high projector replacement a couple weeks ago, I've been dealing with a lot of follow-up stuff with that, making sure sound issues are corrected, video issues, uh, you know, your new touch screen, stuff like that. Uh, lately, a lot of Chromebook repairs been dealing with, um, a lot of broken screens and stuff. How, and then, how many just today? Like just today, it was from junior high alone. It was like ten or eleven, like just from the junior high today. It was a busy weekend. Uh, yeah, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> you gotta uh, get on those kids. Is, uh, I mean, do TikTok oh, challenges still happen? Was that this weekend's oh, TikTok geez. challenge? Yeah, I guess. What were Correct those called? Screen? What were those? Oh, I don't even I don't even remember what those were called, but oh my gosh, yeah, we don't need any more TikTok challenges like that. Yeah, and um, and then like I said, follow up also with internet uh, issues. I know a few people might have had issues connecting to the student Wi-Fi as well this morning. Uh, hopefully that issue should also be resolved, but mostly it's just kind of been running around putting out little fires around the district, you know. Yeah. Luckily, uh, knock on wood, nothing major uh, has happened recently. <laughs> Since we started Recently. recording this yeah. Uh, yeah. 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. We haven't last, checked our email yet. Yeah, last 10 minutes. Thanks. <laughs> what about you, Dan? What's, um, what's been going on in your world, man? Focusing on next year, working through our grant budgets to make sure everything is in line. Have to meet with a couple of private schools that want to participate in our Title I programming this year. So that's a, that's a new experience for me. So I've been communicating with our MDE consultant on that for quite a bit to make sure that I am uh, above board and doing the right thing here. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So definitely have that coming up in the next couple weeks and then working budget things and just making sure that our grants can cover as much as humanly possible um, and that we're utilizing those dollars in a way that makes the most sense for our students in the district. So um, definitely looking forward to, to getting that cycle in and making that happen. And then other than that, I'm starting to think ahead about Camp Chromebook and what things Ooh. you might think need to be added or what things can go away because our kids have mastered those skills. So I'm sure we'll send out a survey if you could take time to fill that out and let us know. I'd appreciate that so that we can so as a quick get re- to designing that. As, so. a, as a quick refresher, what, what grade levels does Camp Chromebook cover? Camp Chromebook is really designed to be fourth and above, and it's really kind of more prescriptive in fourth and fifth and sixth grade with a little bit more refresher in seventh and eighth, and then an available resource for nine through 12. So just kind of something that by the point that most of our kids get to high school, they should have an understanding of how to create a Google Doc and do different things within it. But if you get stuck on something, there's a resource out there, Camp Chromebook, that can definitely kind of Uh, lead the kids through. It's kind of got a fun campy theme to it. Uh, Each video starts off with a little bonfire and crackling wood and gets you set to go outside and use your technology. So yeah and and, and Camp Chromebook this is like the third iteration of it like it used to be uh, a face-to-face thing going into classrooms and obviously when COVID happened that was out of the question. So it sort of transitioned to a, 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 an online just-in-time thing. And then as we emerged out of COVID, the, fine, the, the, the current iteration is mm-hmm. a much more polished like modules yep. that any teacher in the district can go ahead and take and just like dump right into Google Classroom, take things, hey, I'm going to assign this video or yep. I'm going to assign this activity. So. And and it's, it's just, it's really great. And yeah. we, use it, we use it more heavily in the junior high yes in the beginning mm-hmm. of the year yep but there's 15 modules out there right now and I have uh, at least one more video recorded um, on how to do screenshots with the new built-in Google tool and how to record um, your screen on the Chromebook without uh, extension or anything um, because again as those extensions have popped up they've found that some of those extensions uh, certainly bypass go guardian and yep. defeat the purpose of what we want them to do so Got a couple videos with built-in Chromebook native tools for that kind of thing that I have to put together and do that. Every single one of those modules is aligned to a Michigan MyTech, so the the Michigan Integrated Technology um, Competencies for Students. It's all aligned to that, also known as the ISTE standards for students, for those that pay attention to bigger uh, multi-letter organizations. Mm, Bigger acronyms, Um, yeah. Yeah, more acronyms, the better is what the educational model is. Um, so definitely kind of that's something that we have and it's always available 
at campchromebook.org or uh, campchromebook.com. Both domains go to the same website, and it's uh, free to use. You don't even have to sign up or anything. Hey, so. IYKYK. All right. Uh, to Tanya, what have you been up to? Well, I got to visit a second grade classroom last week uh, and do an activity with the robots. And uh, they had just finished their uh, unit on money. So it was exciting to kind of see them um, putting that information, that knowledge to into a process. Um, And they had to like, you know, identify coins or count money in order to um, have their robot travel to where they wanted, where they needed to go. So it was kind of a game, it was fun. Um, and the kids were very appreciative and v- very receptive of it. Um, other than that, just uh, trying to get some things together to present to staff, maybe have some sort of open house, um, you know, in the fall. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we have enough time to do it at the end of this year, but we have lots of tools and things that we'd like to introduce to you, make sure that you're uh, aware of. And, yeah, just uh, kind of wrapping up the year and got a couple students coming in to learn some stuff about um, 3D printing and, you know, just trying to get out there and uh, get some kids to participate and uh, see what we can get done before the end of the year. So how- you you've been able to get into just about every single classroom K five so far this school year, yeah. Uh, I yep. Yeah, I've been well. I hit one first grade and I hit one second grade, um, and I have not gotten into fifth grade yet. Fifth grade sounds yeah. like a so, challenge. Yeah. yeah. So all the all the kindergarten classes and more than once definitely there because they love you down there. Um, a lot of the third grade classes and. Uh, yeah, so and, we're and really fourth grade. Yep, we've yeah. did fourth grade too. So and fourth grade. So we're really Close. excited because people people have more time for that as we're moving beyond COVID, and they've mm-hmm. they're they're in a spot where okay, the kids are ready to engage in that too. Because a lot of the stuff that you do is is extension. Yes, so it's cross curricular. So we did math with the robotics lesson. So it's not just computer science. It's not just science related. It can be integrated into any subject area. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm excited awesome. for next year. I'm excited for all, 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 all this stuff for next year. I'm excited yeah. for more of the STEM stuff, uh, Camp Chromebook being being uh, fully complete, and, and even what you were talking about with the projectors map, because uh, we got to start making plans to refresh the elementary projectors. Yeah, more and refreshments we after the bond equipment. the high school projectors <laughs> yeah. And, yeah new network equipment finally coming in it's a lot of upgrades. okay uh so we only had one question and the question is what was what is was your favorite project in the classroom uh, i'm assuming this is like as a student but i guess since we have three out of the four of us are, uh, we're former teachers like seventy five percent. Seventy five percent. Seventy five percent, Bob. Hey, hey, three out of two people are bad at fractions, okay? Um so that's a mixed number. <laughs> so so, so that's the question. Them. What was your favorite project in the classroom, either as a student or a teacher? One of I've got a few, but one of the projects that's coming to my head right now was eleventh grade English and my eleventh grade English teacher, she wanted us to be more exposed to different forms of presentations and so she took us down to the library where there were like a dozen old Apple IIe's there with this application called HyperCard Studio and it was HyperCard Studio was like it was like PowerPoint meets Adobe Flash so like you could have your PowerPoint slides but then you could like animate stuff on them and I remember doing, uh, we had just read um, uh, well, uh, ta- um, Tale of Two Cities, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we had just read that, right? And so we were, uh, my project team, we had a whole bunch of stuff that revolves around the, the French Revolution and everything. So we had a whole bunch of like guillotines on slides that were, and this isn't like we found a GIF of a guillotine on a slide, because this is like the mid 90s. So we actually had to like figure out how to, draw a crude guillotine ourselves <laughs> and then had it come down and it would chop our titles like in half the titles on the on the cards before we presented the information we were very proud of it the teacher was kind of like 
this, I don't know if this necessarily fits the spirit <laughs> of what I asked him to do, but it was engaging. And everyone, it was like, oh, we want to see what your little crude, little drawn guillotine is going to cut in half that's, next time. So it's like That's like the projects in class where the kids spend more of their time doing the the font colors yes. Yes. than they do on the actual yes. content yes. is yes. what you're yes. describing, Ben. But, but the project in the end was... was we really loved it. We were really engaged with it. I remember it. I remember a little bit more about the French Revolution now because of it. So it was kind of cool. But anyways, Matt, nice. what do you got? Um, I have like a ton of favorite projects. I got to do all kinds of research and different stuff when I was in school. Um, but the one that like really comes to mind, and it's probably just maybe because I'm biased towards this teacher, but um, I had I took public speaking one with uh, Mr. V here at Coloma, and. I always thought that that class was was really interesting because he he's really good at pushing you out of your comfort zone. We did like you know at one point we all had to pretend to be a different type of animal in front of everybody. You know, roar like a T Rex. You know, buck, uh, buck like a chicken, stuff like that. But you know, and so by the time the end of the class came around, we had our final speeches. And I when I came to do mine, I really realized a big change in myself from the you know quiet, scared guy. You know, get real nervous when he's talking to. You know, I, I volunteered to be the very first one to give his final speech. Uh, you know, I chose a very controversial topic, and I, and I did that on purpose, uh, and I was excited to. Uh, and I ended up having a blast, like, giving, you know, this really intense speech. I did a lot of research going into it on, on the topic and uh, my, my counterpoints and stuff. But, and by the end of it, you know, I didn't. I didn't have the big like you know nerves and oh this can't why when will this be over instead it was uh, a lot more accomplished and, and stuff which I saw as a big change to myself going into presentations um, so that's always kind of left a big mark on me ever since because um, like I said I saw such a big change in myself from the the quiet kid to the one who's not afraid to stand up and, and give a speech cool yeah. very cool yeah. very cool and no, you, you didn't have to roar like a dinosaur I, during your speech. I did not have to roar like a dinosaur during the speech, but oh. I did I did witness someone. He did it after the speech. Yes. <laughs> he finished, he dropped the mic, and then he roared like a dinosaur. At the T-Rex kids. mic drop. No, what I yeah. should have done was it what a kid toes. named Jonas did who pretended to be a deer and then ran straight into the door. Oh, man. Because... <laughs> Commitment. Yeah, a Commitment deer couldn't open park. that door. Yeah, that's how. Character. That, that's how Jonas got a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, all right. What about you, Dan? Uh, that's a that's a toss up. I had a lot of great experiences in my schooling of pretty awesome projects. Um, you know, the ones where we coded HTML websites and I hid songs behind there so the teacher didn't know how to turn them off because it was all. Um, but I'm gonna focus on one that I actually taught. We did we did a, a economics um, project that was really kind of pulling apart most of the macroeconomic indicators out there. And for those that don't teach economics, that'd be like your GDP, your gross domestic product, inflation, which has been in the news frequently for us right now. And we would uh, basically kind of tell the kids with a letter that was forged on White House uh, letterhead with a <laughs> downloadable presidential signature and or maybe, you know, maybe the real pre president. I don't know. The kids didn't know. Um, <laughs> But uh, we definitely would do that and have this probably file on me somewhere at the Secret Service about impersonating presidents. But um, basically what would happen is I would push those kids through. I'd say, hey, here's our current economic indicators. Here's some other times throughout history where this has happened. And we've got to head this off because everybody else is telling us that a recession's coming and we've got to keep the economy floating. Um, so we would do all of that and the kids would go through and they'd learn all these little pieces and they'd get these little nuggets of information just in time and it was fantastic. Some of them could work ahead of time and make sure that they you know, were kind of on, the, on, the, on task moving forward. Others kind of took a little extra time so we'd do a lot of reteaching within that project um, to make sure that was happening and nothing had been taught prior to that. They went into that project with nothing known about those items maybe they heard it on the radio in the car with mom or dad but that's about it hmm. and um so definitely kind of teach them all the way up and it, it made it so like they had to know what gross domestic product meant they had to know what the inflation rates meant they had to know what unemployment was and how to calculate it and it was really an awesome way for us to kind of do that 
Um, and, and ultimately, it ended up with them making recommendations to avoid the next Great Depression or Great Recession. Ooh. Um, they had to like kind of say, we need to do this, this, and that. And that was their recommendation in the form of a white paper that they would write. And it was a fantastic um, wow. thing that brought in all kinds of different um, different classes and subjects and ideas into an economics classroom. So it wasn't sit and get or here's graph supply and demand. It was definitely a very interesting way to approach macroeconomic topics, which most kids don't find interesting. Well, so uh, most most adults either. most adults <laughs> don't <laughs> find it. <interesting. laughs> yeah. So there. it was a lot of fun to teach that way, and it was a it was a really awesome project that we would do them through um, and get them kind of to kind of go that way. And it was always how we kind of finished our year because our last unit would always be macro. That's cool, man. After spending the first part of the semester on micro. micro. So. That's, that's cool. You turn them all into little uh, economic advisors. Correct. That's what, they nice. were, that's what their title is, the Presidential Economic Advisor Team. Boom. Or Pete. <laughs> I just call them all Pete for a week. Uh, Two Pete. weeks. Three weeks. Pete and Pete. So. <laughs> Pete and repeat. There you go. That's a classic show. Uh, Pete, the Adventures of Pete and Pete. All right, Tanya, what do you got? Um... I can think of an, a project that I used to use with my students. Um, we did paper slide videos, uh, one take, mm, um, mm, mm. and okay. we yeah we had we, the kids would print out pictures or draw their own pictures. They had a script and somebody kind of slid the the pieces of paper in and out of the video as the as they talked, um, and they had to explain. Um, seafloor spreading and Alfred Wegener's theory of seafloor sea floor spreading sea and continental drift, drift and all of that. Yeah. Did Sally sell seashells <laughs> down on the seafloor? Plate floor? tectonics. <laughs> Plate tectonics. Uh, but yeah, it was it was neat. It was you know showing evidence, and um, I hope that some of those students still remember those videos. I still have them on my uh, in my drive, and every once in a while, I'll come across them and get a big smile on my face because I feel like it was super successful and um, gave them an experience that uh, kind of will stuck, stick with them for some time, hopefully. That was, I, I remember that like when those were really popular too, the, the what, paper slide, what, what, do you, what, would you, what did you call them yeah, again? Yeah, a paper slide video. Paper yep. slide. Yeah, because it was a really nice way of like, you can use technology, but you don't have to be very technical. You just, you would write out all your slides on sheets of paper and then just pull them, and so the, there were all sorts of fun little ways you could put animations or drawings or, or mm -hmm. pictures or whatever. Um, it was a, that's awesome. So like, you didn't have to be that technical. Well, to and, make and that I didn't have to oversee it very very closely either because I had stations set up in various rooms, and I set, yep. sent one group in to go and record and. They would, you know, get their stuff done, and the next group would come out. So it, it just it worked out really well, and um, and it wasn't really heavy teacher led. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, that's what we got for you this time around. We we wanted to keep the podcast a little bit shorter than the last one. We had you know a, a, about a dozen questions from all the students, but uh, uh, as always, we would love to hear from you. Um, any questions you have, anytime we send that um, survey out, ask us anything. We really do mean it. Ask, ask us anything. Doesn't even have to be technology related. I was, I was pulling up our old one, and we had questions about how many seasons of NCIS were there. Like, yeah, oh yeah, I remember that. that. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. The type of question that's fun for us to kind of work our, our minds through and figure that out. There you go.